domains of rational functions. So our objective here is actually stated in the title. We're going to find the domains of rational functions. What do we know? Well, we know what the domain, what a, what the domain is. It's the set of all values that go into a function. Let's say that can go into a function, okay, and give you a result, okay? The domain, you have to go, the function must accept. So let's say that, let's, go, let's, let's put that down. The that the function accepts Okay, it has to be something that the function can take in and give you an output value. Okay, so the domain, the set of all possible values that can go into the function and, and you will then get an output value. And let's remind ourselves what interval notation is. Interval notation is a way that we write all numbers between two given numbers. So this is all numbers between zero and 20. If we use a bracket, we include the number that's next to the bracket. If we use a parenthesis, we do not include the number that is next to the parenthesis. Okay, so what are rational functions? Okay, rational functions are quotients of polynomial functions. So officially, f of x is equal to p of x over q of x. A function is equal to a function over a function. So this is a rational function, which is a quotient of two functions. P of x and Q of x are polynomial functions. And of course, Q of x cannot be zero. And that's important. You cannot have a zero in your denominator. So if we, wound up with, if we wind up with a zero in our denominator, that can't be part of our domain. We will not get an output value. The domain of a rational function is the set of all real numbers except the x values that make the denominator zero. Why? Because zero, division by zero is undefined. So we're looking at the denominators and we want to have the denominator not be zero. We're looking for all the other numbers, okay? But those that make it zero, we wanna take out of our domain. So. Find the domain of each rational function. State each domain in interval notation. Okay, so we're here. f of x equals the numerator polynomial function x squared minus 25 divided by the denominator x minus 5. What do we know? Our domain is affected by the denominator in rational functions because they cannot be zero. So when is our denominator equal to zero? Well, it's equal to zero when x is five. Okay, that means we have a zero denominator and the function will not work. It will not return a value, it will return an error. You're trying to divide by zero, I can't do that. So we know that five is not in the domain. It results in a zero denominator. So what's that look like? Well, here's all real numbers, and we're gonna take the five out. So there's your number line look, all real numbers, but no five. In interval notation, your domain goes from negative infinity to five, and we're not going to include five, so we use a parenthesis, and we're gonna union that going from five to positive infinity Again, using parentheses. So this is saying you need to skip the number five. Okay, let's do two more examples. Again, we are focused, we are hyper-focused on the denominator. Let me get my paper out here. It's off to my right. Okay. All right, here I have a rational function. Uh, the rational function g of x is equal to x divided by x squared minus 25. I'm focusing on the denominator because the denominator cannot be zero. So when is the denominator equal to zero? When is this zero? Well, x squared equals 25 
Take the square root of both sides and we get positive or negative five. Remember we square root both sides, we need to include both the positive and the negative. So, we're, so we know positive five and negative, whoops, not negative one, negative five are not in the domain. They are not values that can go into the function because we'll get an error. On the number line, what's that look like? Well, we're gonna take out the five and we're gonna take out the negative five and all other numbers are okay. They're in the domain. In interval notation, I go from negative infinity to negative five. I'll union that with negative five to five, and I'll union that with five to infinity. And I've skipped negative five with these parentheses, and I've skipped positive five with those parentheses. Okay, last example. Uh, get it up here for you. This function, this rational function is h of x, and it's equal to x plus five divided by x squared plus 25. Okay, let's take a look at our denominator, because we know that when our denominator is zero, those numbers that make it zero are not in the domain. So when is x squared plus 25 equal to zero? Well, let's, in the real number system, so let's subtract 25 from both sides, and then let's square root both sides, and I have plus or minus the square root of negative 25, well, we know with our imaginary knowledge that this is equal to plus or minus 5i. Doesn't matter, I just did this extra step. I can't take the square root of a negative in the real number system. I have to move to the imaginary number system, but we're not going to the imaginary number system with this. So we have no domain restriction. There is no real number that results in the denominator being zero. So the domain goes with all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. So there you have it. With rational functions, you want to focus on the denominator because that's where bad things can happen whenever the denominator winds up being zero.